here super early. Uh, we're not, we're required to punch in at 6.55 a.m. Um, if there's no job pending. But it is 6.30 on the dot and I'm sitting in my car in the parking lot at work because I like to get here early, um, professional courtesy to get the night crew out on time. If there is a job before 7 a.m., I will gladly hop on the truck. I come dressed and I'm ready and I'll get on the truck and get these guys out. So um, I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and drink my coffee, listen to the radio. I was super happy when I got in my car this morning. There was some mellow music playing. Um, and it was like, it was great because it like, chilled me out for the day and you know it was Nora Jones and it reminded me of my husband because we went to see her in concert together and it was just a great memory that came back to me so as I'm sitting in my car drinking my coffee I had a very mellow and relaxing um, drive into work and today I happen to be on one of the very very busy trucks in the system um, so I don't foresee much downtime today. So like in the morning, I like to drink my coffee, relax, reflect a little bit and, you know, just enjoy the calm before the storm. So um, that's what I'm doing now in my in my car, in the parking lot at work, just chilling. So day in the life of a paramedic. So the way our job works is that a full time week is 36 hours. That's um, three days in a week but it's 12 hour shifts. That's a long day. So you gotta um, consider that you have a commute into work, a commute home and 12 hours of work. Plus if you get an overrun um, at the end of your shift, you could, your work way, your, your work day could be longer than 12 hours. So just keep that in mind. Also, um, you're outside in the elements. So whether it's raining or snow or super cold out, or super freaking hot out, excuse my language, but I do not like working in the summer. Um, you're out here, you're out here in this and you're, you know, rain or shine, hot or cold, you're out here and you know, you have to deal with that. So you have to learn some tricks along the way to make your day more comfortable. And you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been with the company that I work with for 20 years. I've just had my 20 year anniversary in um, in October. So, and I, I'm sorry, I don't care what anybody has to say. I, I love working here. It's a great, you know, job. I love my job. I love being a paramedic. I love having that 12 hour, you know, job where I'm working, but you also have a lot of freedom. I mean, you can take a nap in between your jobs. You can go shopping in between your jobs. Um, you know, on a day that it's super, super busy, you get no downtime and it's super frustrating. I get it. But no other job in the world gives you the freedom that this one does. And, you know, the supervisors here are, are pretty lenient. They're pretty cool. They work with you. If you need a day off, you, you can usually get your day off. Um, your coworkers, me personally, have I've had, you know, hot and cold with them. But, um, you know, I've learned to deal with that and I've worked through that and I'll go into that um, in another video at, at another time. But being that I've been here for 20 years, I, I love my job and that's why I'm still here. So I love being a paramedic. Basically the heart monitor, we can see you know what rhythm you're in and we can also defibrillate, cardiovert, and pace people on this. And this is our gigantic med bag. It has all of our medications in it, IV setups and stuff like that, uh, nebulizers for breathing treatments, and an IO gun to do IOs on people, which is an intraosseous um, basically uh, access to give medications to people that we can't get peripheral lines in, so that's pretty cool. And I'm just gonna go through these bags and that's how we start our day on our unit. We carry narcotics on our unit. There's two bags. One is for um, pain management and stuff like that. The other one is for airway management. Um, so every morning we need to open these bags and count the medication because they're controlled substances. So each shift has to count the narcs and 
we log them in a book to make sure that uh, there's no missing narcs. So we're all held accountable for these medications in this bag. Look inside of our bag, we have fluid. We have um, different types of fluid in our bag. We have medications for codes, all kinds of heart medication, and um, other standard medications that paramedics carry. We have airway stuff for respiratory emergencies. Um, this thing right here is called a CPAP. This is great for people that um, have trouble breathing. It's just um, a large airflow mask that goes on your face that helps um, with CHF, COPDs, any kind of respiratory emergency. That, that's a great mask. And then in the front of our bag here, we have stuff for IVs, different types of catheters and syringes to draw up our medication and stuff like that, flushes, and then pretty cool. Um, it's an I.O. gun. It's just like a drill. And this is the needle that goes on it. And basically this can go right into um, someone's bone. So that way the uh, needle's in the bone marrow. And that's um, an alternate way to get medication to somebody if you can't get an IV. You can just use this little nifty device and this will help you out. Pretty cool. We have a glucometer in the truck. And this basically is um, to check people's sugar, and we can treat diabetics, and we can figure out why somebody's mental status might be altered, and stuff like that. So it's that's another cool tool that we carry. Recently got ventilators on the trucks, which is uh, very neat, because uh, now after a cardiac arrest or somebody that doesn't have um, adequate respirations or something like that, we can um, be hands-free as far as ventilating our patients now, which is really cool and, you know, super awesome that we finally got these. This is this is great. So this is the vent circuit. We always have to make sure that we have two. And basically it, uh, it breathes for our patients. So that's pretty neat to be hands-free like that. Wow, uh, time to get some coffee. This is every paramedic's BFF out here because it's always, always open, even on a holiday. All hours of the night. This and Duncan can't do paramedicine without it. It's about 10 a.m. and we've had two cancels so far. Um, a cancel is when the EMTs on scene decide that they don't need the paramedics to respond. Um, so it's a great day so far and we've been in the truck listening to music and that's great because 100.1 um, is playing top countdown of 1985 and I love 80s music so that's been fun so yeah it's been a good day so far I'm about to make some IV setups for our ambulance That didn't last long. We just had our first patient contact of the day, which was a uh, little old lady who decided to stop taking her medicine because she found out that her niece is sick and she lost her will to live. So she stopped taking her meds, which is very sad. But um, we took her to the hospital and here we are. Uh, where I work, EMS is a two-tiered system, which means we have a a BLS unit which has EMTs on it and a ALS unit which has the paramedics on it for serious calls. So um, EMTs respond to every call. Paramedics come for the more serious calls. We got our last call as a stroke. Um, when we got there we found out it, it really wasn't a stroke but the patient was altered mental status so we did uh, go ahead and treat it. Um, Part of our responsibility on that call will be to do a blood sugar, a 12 lead EKG, uh, vital signs to see what rhythm she's in, and um, you know, any kind of diagnostic tools that we may have to figure out why she's altered. So that's what we did for this lady and we brought her into the hospital and she's stable, but altered. So that's our first call right, of the day. We just had our second patient contact of the day. And this one was a um, little man who, 
is also non-compliant with his meds. He has COPD and he was having problems breathing. Um, I can't stress enough how important it is to follow any medicine regimen that your doctor prescribes to you. Like a lot of our calls could be avoided if people took their medication properly. So anyway, we gave this guy a breathing treatment and we took him to the hospital and hopefully he'll he'll be okay shortly and he can go home. Patient contact number three was a severe respiratory and we wound up using our CPAP mask that I showed you earlier. Oh, this patient uh, was febrile, probably aspiration pneumonia, but um, they needed a little help with their breathing. So that's what we did with this one. And we got him to the hospital, which is where we are now. It's 3.30 in the afternoon and this is about the time where I start to crash. Um, it's too late to have coffee because if I had coffee right now, like, I'd be up all night. So I just have to muster through. Good thing it's beautiful out. So I'm just getting some air and hopefully that will keep me awake for the rest of my shift. <laughs> we are back at the famous Wawa because we make several stops here a day. But this time we're fueling up because we need to turn over the truck with a full tank of gas at the end of the shift. Last patient was a stroke, so we took him to the CAT scan in the hospital so that they could scan his brain and see if um, they can um, do anything for him in the ER there or if they have to um, send him somewhere else. Uh, so basically when we got to him, he was slurring his speech, he had a headache, he had a facial droop, he had unequal grips of his hands, and um, he had expressive aphasia, which means he couldn't get his words out. So um, yeah, that's our last patient. We took him to the ER and we got him right into CAT scan. So our local hospital is good like that. If you call ahead, they'll be waiting for you and you can go right back and the patient can get immediate care. So I thought that was great that we got seen so fast. call we just had was a little old man who has Parkinson's and he was shuffling along in the hallway on his way to the bathroom and he wound up tripping over the hallway rug and he fell back and hit his head so thankfully he did not lose consciousness he was awake and alert and he's not on any blood thinners so we were able to take him to a local hospital and um, hopefully he'll be okay so and hopefully this is our last job because it is now 6 35 p.m. and I am in a hospital that is not in our primary area so that almost guarantees they're gonna tag us on the way back and i will not get out by 7 p.m so pray for me and hope that i do get out on time because i have stuff to do when i get home so say a prayer 103 i just punched out i'm on my way to my car so i can go home and then when I get home, my plan is to, I have to work out and then I have to get my uniform ready for tomorrow and the coffee pot and my lunch, get my daughter situated. I have to go pick her up right now and that'll be the end of my night. So I hope you all enjoyed this little glimpse into the life of a paramedic and that you understand a little bit more about what we do. So I will catch you on the next one. Sorry about the lighting. There we go. Ciao!